In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can make API calls to the Shopify API from your Laravel application. So stay tuned. So this is the place where we left off at the last tutorial where we added a collections component which just shows this collections right here and we also added a navigation link and if you're interested in how that works then just click the link to that last video but now i want to show you the bread and butter of shopify develop app development and that is making api calls to the shopify api and in this video, we're going to take a look at the REST API calls. And in the next video, we're going to refactor the whole code to use the GraphQL API from Shopify. In order to show the collections, I'm just going to use a simple resource list and we can take a preview of how that will look if we switch tabs to the Polaris documentation, to the Shopify Polaris documentation. And in here, I can go to the resource list and I can take a look at the preview and here you can see the resource list which is just a simple resource list and that is exactly the component that we are going to need so I'm going to switch the tabs to code and from this resource list I will have to copy the code but I'm not going to copy the whole code everything that I want is just within this card right here so I will have to copy that and now I will switch back to VS Code. And in here I have my component that I have already set up. And I'm going to replace this collection with the, cop with the code that I have copied. And now I just have to make sure that I import all of the components. So import that, import the avatar. resource item and also the text style. I still have an error here for the ID and it says number is not assignable to type string. So we got the ID which is currently a number but it should be a string. Now we got rid of all of the errors and I can save it. Uh, what is left is I have to type npm run watch and it has compiled successfully. Now let me go back to the co collections page, refresh the page and here you can see the resource list. Now it doesn't look that good so I will add some minor changes to it just make it look a little bit better. And by making it look better, I mean that I want to add a, uh, a layout and a page, which is done pretty easily. So I will just have to add a page component. Wrap everything inside of that page component. I will also add a layout component. Wrap everything inside of that layout. And I will finally add a layout section. Wrap everything inside of that layout section. Save it and wait till it compiles. Now let me free refresh the page and take a look at how it looks now. And there you can see that it looks a little bit better. And now I want to display my collections within that resource page. And you can make some REST API calls to the Shopify API from within the browser. For example, you can add the name of your store, slash admin, slash, for example, collections, and then type in dot JSON. And now you will get a full chasing of all of the collections that you have. But I don't want to make a call within the browser. I want to make a call from within my app. Now at first, you might think that you could make a call from the front end. And I want to show you what happens if you make a call from the front end. I'm just going to make a regular access call within a use effect.
at axios dot get and type in the address of my development store and I think it's enough if I just console log it so I now have a, an API call from the front end and let me go back to my app open the development tools switch to console and refresh the page and in here you can see that the access to this URL has been blocked so there's a course error you would also see this from the networks tab so you can see in here there's a 404 error and that's because of a course error that is because you're making a request to this URL but actually your app is this URL. So this is a cross origin error. So it's not possible to make calls to the Shopify API from the front end of your app, but you will have to make those calls from the back end of your app. And since we're working with a Laravel application, that is no problem. All we have to do is create a new controller, which will handle the request for us.